So today we're going to have a look at um, the Tectronics 2465B and 2467B and the differences between them. Uh, they're two oscilloscopes are basically identical. Uh, they're both 400 megahertz four channel oscilloscopes. Um, the 2467B is uh, at the top there. And you'll see it's got a smaller screen than the 2465B which is sitting below it. And you might think that's uh, a bit of uh, a drawback. However, uh, one of the benefits of the 2467B is its microchannel plate CRT. And what that means is it means we can capture uh, really uh, low uh, repetitive rate signals, which normally are very difficult to see on a conventional CRT. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you today. And uh, what I have uh, here as well is I have a Jim Williams uh, signal source. And uh, as you can see here, I'm going to take a little bit of a zoom in on that. So here's my Jim Williams signal source. This is a pulse generator. It generates a, a nice short pulse, but with a very fast uh, rise time. And uh, we can use that to determine uh, how good uh, a scope's bandwidth is. And uh, you'll see here that I've also added onto the end of it, there's a, a normal uh, 20 dB pad because the uh, size of the signal that comes out of the uh, Jim Williams sig signal uh, or pulse generator is actually quite a large signal, so that attenuates it somewhat. And I've got a little homebrew splitter on there, and uh, that's made up of uh, three 50 ohm resistors in a delta uh, formation, which uh, gives us a nice matching throughout. And uh, you'll see as well in the actual uh, Jim Williams signal generator itself, there's a bunch of stuff which is just done on normal perf board. Uh, that's really just the power supply, which generates about 90 volts uh, off of a one and a half volt battery, which is pretty neat. But the uh, the RFE high frequency stuff you'll see down there, uh, that's uh, done uh, Manhattan style or dead bug style, or whatever you want to do, whatever you want to call it, and uh, it's done really to uh, make sure that the lead lengths are as short as possible. And then it goes straight onto an SMA connector, and the the base that the uh, Breadboarding, or sorry, the uh, Manhattan style construction is done on is there's a bit of uh, FR4 straight onto the copper there. So I'm going to try the 2465B first uh, with the, the uh, pulse generator. And I've got it set up to 500 uh, millivolts per division on the vertical. And uh, also it's slightly offset. Uh, you'll see why in a moment because uh, we're going to use a delayed time base uh, in a moment to zoom in on the signal. And uh, also we've got uh, one microsecond as the as a horizontal uh, uh, time base setting. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the battery in in a moment into the uh, Jim Williams uh, pulse generator. And uh, you should see the triggered light. There's a little triggered light up here which comes on. There's actually a reason why I've got the lights turned down. You'll see that why in a moment. Um, and uh, what we'll see is this triggered uh, light will come on when I put in the, the battery. So I put it in now. There we go. And uh, the scope's triggered, which is good. And uh, also, hopefully, we'll be able to see a little... You can just about see it. If I just move it along horizontally, you should just be able to see. What I'm going to do is switch off that light. And as you can see, right at the beginning of the trace there's a little blip. So it's not very big this blip. And uh, what we'll do now is uh, I'm going to see if we can zoom in on that little blip um, using the delayed time base. So to do that uh, what we do is we pull out the time base knob and uh, then we can select a, a, a different time base for the B sweep. You'll see here this is the B sweep time base. And this bit here actually the highlighted part here tells us what part of the main trace, the A sweep, that we're zooming in on, and it's repeated down here. So if we zoom in further and further and further, you'll see that this gets smaller and smaller. However, you'll also see on the trace below, you'll see that we have this, which is the uh, expanded uh, version of what's up here. And there we go. You'll also notice, and you'll, re you'll realise now why I switched the lights off, uh, because if I switch them back on again, 
it makes it really difficult to see that trace. And in a moment, I'm going to really ramp it up. So there we go. We're up to the maximum that the scope will do without going to times 10 magnification. Still visible. And uh, here we go. This is this is what we used to have to put up with uh, back in the old days. And um, I'm going to see if we can just get that times 10. I'm not sure if you can see that. If I just move it, you can just hopefully just about see that. And as you can imagine, if I put the light on now, we're just not going to see that. If I put the light on right now, I can't see it. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. It's just not there. So, if people ever wonder why it is that engineers work in darkened rooms, this is, this is one of the reasons why we have that reputation. So, what I'll do now is I'm going to do exactly the same experiment. I'm going to do it with a 2467B and we'll see how we get on with that. Okay, so on to the 2467B now, which is, uh, as far as it goes with the electronics uh, on the this scope, it's exactly the same as a 2465B, both 400 megahertz, four channel, but you'll see the screen's a little bit smaller. And this is because it uh, uses a, a micro-channel uh, plate uh, CRT rather than a, a, a more conventional uh, CRT, which is using a 2465B. And I'm going to show you what the benefit of that is. And uh, you'll see it's still set up to the same settings as before. 500 millivolts um, per division on the vertical and 1 microsecond per division on the horizontal. And uh, I'm going to plug in the... or put the battery in on the, on the pulse generator. There we go. And uh, you may be able to see it already, but I'm going to just... Move it along around a little bit, and you'll see that there's a little pulse there. Uh, if you don't believe me, I'll just put the intensity up a little bit. I mean, already, as far as I can tell, that's far more visible than it was on the 2465. So this is a very brief pulse, and we're at one microsecond per division, and it's, it's still, I think, more visible. But what we'll do is we'll uh, zoom in a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do is to use the second sweep. There we go. And we will zoom in, and you'll see that's our pulse appearing on the bottom there. Hopefully, you'll see this is this is already much more visible. We're up to the maximum uh, five nanoseconds per division. We still have the lights on. Uh, we don't have to uh, crawl away into our dark hole. We've put ten times magnification on. There we go. So this is our pulse and it's still completely visible even at the maximum setting on the oscilloscope this pulse which um, if we take off times 10 the width of this pulse is probably oh it looks like to be about 5 nanoseconds per division it's about 6 nanoseconds 6 and a half nanoseconds wide and uh, so what's happening here is you can still see it on this trace here so that's one microsecond per division so it's still getting quite a good uh, uh, visibility of that very, very small pulse. And uh, as you can see, the, the visibility on the uh, delayed time sweep as well is still in per perfectly normal uh, office light. is uh, perfectly easy to see, unlike it was on the 2465B. Even with times 10 magnification, with the wonderful 500 picoseconds per division uh, on there. And uh, it's, for me... Um, I hadn't realised how much difference there was. I used to have a 2465B uh, for a few years and I sold it. And I always remember it being difficult to, to see these uh, really small, uh, repetitive but tiny signals on the uh, 2465B. Uh, and I hadn't realised until just trying them uh, against one another just what the difference was. And um, hopefully that's demonstrated that uh, here for you as well. Thanks very much for watching.